Will you turn your Bibles to John chapter 11? And um, I, I'm trying so that I can keep to my time. There are other announcements they will make. They will make the announcements after the service. You know, they will make the announcements at, when, when I'm done preaching. Please, I want, to ask, um, I want to ask you to do something. All of you that are into communications, that's an area we're working on a lot in our church, communication and IT. If you wouldn't mind, you can inbox me your details at my Instagram page, you know, just for, to have your ideas and we can have a meeting and, you know, do all of that for you. That's, you know, because we won't love you to serve with that expertise in church. Praise the Lord. The second thing is that this week I'll be, um, there will be some, there are a lot of openings in our church for people that have HR background. If you have HR background and you love to work full-time in church, and work full-time in church doesn't will be paid nonsense. You'll be paid just like you'll be paid in an organization. You should, because some of you are looking for job out of job, you want to change, you should look into the opportunities, um, you know, for those that have um, HR, event management, and, um, and customer service. If you have those kind of three background, you want to, when the opportunities come up, you want to send in your applications. And marketing, marketing is the fourth one. All right, so John chapter 11, let's read from verse 38. John chapter 11, verse 38. The Bible says, and Jesus therefore again groaning. Now, let me give you the background. Now, let me, just, let me just help to say this ahead of time. I will be quoting and saying a lot of the Bible stories because, not because I can't read from the Bible, but because sometimes reading from the Bible takes a lot of time, you know, just reading directly. So I will just quote it and there will be a reference point on the screen that you can see there. All right, so the background of this story was that Lazarus had died. Lazarus was very close to Jesus with Mary and Martha. And they had invited Jesus Christ to come and to come and, you know, just come and um, sp um, heal him. Jesus Christ did not turn up at the time expected. Lazarus died. And when Jesus Christ came, and it's amazing because Jesus Christ did not turn up when it was expected, but Lazarus died. Let me say something to you people. The fact that your prayer was not answered the way you want it does not mean that God has forgotten your prayers. I'm telling you, because the problem is that most of you really hope it will happen this way but God is always God he has 1,000 ways to answer that prayers so they were hoping that Lazarus would be healed from this from, will be healed from being sick God was believing he will be raised from the dead glory to God and the reason why I said so is this so when that prayer is not answered most people just give in the towel they just stop believing they just stop believing so let's go Verse 38, the Bible says, And Jesus again groaning in himself came unto the grave, and it was, it was a cave. Now they had put him in, a, in, a, you know, in some kind of place. And Jesus said, Take you away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was, that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he's thinking, for he has been dead for four days. And Jesus said unto him, See, see, so Jesus Christ said, Hey, I want to do a miracle. Remove the stone. Question could Jesus remove the stone himself? Of course, by the word of his power, he could remove the stone. But Jesus says, hey, you remove the stone. Why? The stone is what was blocking the miracle. He says, remove the stone. And we're going to examine what that stone is. He said, remove the stone. He says, remove the stone. Then she said unto her, um, so, sorry, then what verse are we in now? Then Jesus said, then she had said that, Lord, don't you understand? By now, it will be stinking. This four days. So, left to Martha, she's not going to remove the stone. And until the stone is removed, Jesus is not going to speak the word. The miracle will not happen until the stone is removed. Why did they say, it's, uh, I can't remove the stone? Number one, because removing the stone is that I'm going to remember something that pains me. And a lot of you are that, like that. You believe God for things that did not happen in your life. And you put them in a cave or in a tomb. And every time they pray, you never want to go back there because it's a painful thing. The second thing is this. When he says remove the stone, it's because behind that stone, Lazarus will be decomposing. It's hopelessness. The promotion list is out for the place you work and it comes out once in a year. And your name is not on that list. So when you come to the service and you say pray for promotion, it's useless to pray for promotion because the promotion list is out. You've actually given up on it. And Jesus says, I know that the promotion list is out, but can you still believe for a miracle? He says, remove the stone. 
Some of you want to, some of you need maybe a visa or you need some kind of translation that has a deadline. And the deadline is not, is gone, but the miracle has not happened. And you're wondering, why should I keep praying? Because up to me, it's over. And Jesus Christ removed the stone. The question this morning is this, what is the stone that needs to be removed so that Jesus can speak the miracle word into your life and produce a miracle? And what is your excuse for not removing that stone? Is it hopelessness? Some, some of you want to say, singles want to pray for marriage. It doesn't even occur to you they're talking to you. Because you've prayed for five, ten years now, and you're not married. And like, whatever. People that don't marry don't die. And just, so you become hopeless, and Jesus Christ says, remove the stone. And some of you, it's, it's a child that you want. And you say, well, I've been doing it on this for five years right now. And Jesus Christ says, remove the stone. Because you need to, you remove the stone for Jesus Christ to speak the word through. Glory to God. Hell, oh, glory to God. Let's look at this. <laughs> the verse, the, <laughs> verse 41, um, verse 40. What did Jesus Christ say? What is to remove the stone? And they, they give excuses. And Jesus said unto her, said I not unto you, if thou wouldest believe that you will see the glory of God. He says, if you can maintain a mental attitude that is full of believing, you will see the glory of God. He says, if you can just open up your heart and say God can do it, you will see the glory of God. <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. Let, let me just start with some testimonies here. Just, just some ridiculous testimonies. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if you saw my post this morning as I was coming to church. There was a lady in this church. Maybe she's going to give, give a testimony here. SS, born SS. Um, we had the um, wine press. I went to preach in Antony, you know, on Saturday. I prayed, prayed for the sick. Great miracles happened. She believed she'd receive that healing. And to, you see, when there's faith, there's action. She went back to the hospital to do a genotype type test. And although that same hospital, I've told her several times, you are SS, the hospital said, now you are AA. And she did a test, and did a test, and did a test. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you know the amount of faith to go back to the hospital where they know you are SS because you've done the test before? And say, test me again. And they'll also be like, this guy, you, this lady, you lost to waste your money. We know you are SS. And the miracle comes out and says you are AA. That's faith. You know, you know what faith is? Faith is applying to where you're denied because God said he has given you a job there. It's going back and applying there. That's faith. Faith, faith is staying with that cell that's not grown and say in 2020, it's over different. It will multiply. That's faith. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what service I told you here. It was when I said Goliath must die or must fall. I told everybody to write what? Goliath. One of our staff in the Lekki Church. He had some financial needs because he's taking a huge decision in his life. And he said, this is a church of his staff. He says, wrote down one million naira. That song would, I, would, I received one million naira. And he took it. He said, this is a big thing. I've never, nobody has given this one before. Put it on and step say, this Goliath has died today. Last Thursday, he sent me a text. He said, Pastor Bolaji, one person walked to the office and gave me a million naira. He said, Pastor, I said, that's wonderful. He said, Pastor, it's not wonderful. Why was I so stupid? Why did I write 25 million naira? And, and I'm going to, he said, why did I write 25 million naira? Be because, because the Bible says, Bible says that if thou wouldest believe, you will see the glory of God. You can't have more testimonies than what you believe. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. So let's see, let's read. The Bible says, I said unto them, if that... Where's Pastor Dye, by the way? Can you even get his attention? Yeah. It says, if that would us believe, you will, you will see the glory of God. The Bible says, then he took away the stones from the place where he... he where the, say, watch this now. And what? And what? And what? And they what? Come on, read, please. And they what? You know what I'm saying? So, sometimes you can't even move the stone yourself. You need people to help you move the stone. The question is that, are you in a community of people that can help you move the stone if you can't move it yourself. If, that's why you need to belong to a cell. Because everybody needs someone that when you cannot move a stone, 
they can support you and move the stone on your behalf. The Bible says, and they took away the stone from where he was, where the dead one is. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you because you've always helped me. Yes, let's go. And um, I knew that he me always. And because of the people which stand by said I, you know, he said that they may believe that they have sent me. Okay. So he was saying that all this prayer is unnecessary because of them, actually. The next thing he said was this. What did he say? But next verse, please. And when he had so spoken, he cried with a loud voice and said, Lazarus, what? Come forth. And with the Bible, you know the Bible, that Lazarus came out of the dead place. But the point is that before Lazarus come, came forth, there was someone that must move the stone away. There was someone that must move the stone away. So this morning, this morning, as we talk about how to unblock your miracles, or how am I blocking my miracles, someone says, okay, I know that there was a stone that was hindering them, but what is the stone in my life? I'm going to explain in a moment. One of the things you need to know is that faith can achieve the impossible. Faith isn't just believing that without proof, but faith is trusting without reservation. Faith is not just believing without proof. Faith is trusting without what? Reservation. I, I just trust without reservation. That's faith. So why is faith important? Because faith, because, so, so, so we're going to talk about thought and faith. How am I blocking your miracles? Watch this now. In the story we read in John chapter 11, the way they blocked their miracle was a physical stone. The way people block their miracles today is their thoughts, their mindset. So, God is saying, I want to do something huge in your life. God is saying, I want to do something fantastic in your life. But God is saying this, will you, it says, this mindset is the stone. This mindset is the stone. Will you move this mindset so that I can do something? Listen to me. Your mindset can be a conductor for God's power or can be an insulator for God's power. Which one is your mindset? Some people, let me tell you something. Your mindset and your thoughts can be your biggest friend or your biggest enemy. It can be. When your mindset aligns with God, great things can happen. When your mindset walks against, walks against God, terrible things will happen. So when the Bible says, roll away the stone, it's the mindset it's talking about. So first principle, thoughts can limit our faith. Thoughts can limit our faith. Thoughts and mental can limit our faith. So I'll say, how do you mean? I'll give examples. Look at Peter. The Bible says when Peter was walking on water, when he saw the waves, what happened? Question, when he saw the waves, did anything change in the spiritual realm? Yes or no? Yes or no? I'm not sure if anything changed. What he saw and the inter let me tell you something. Whenever I say he saw the waves, question, had he not seen the waves before? Yes or no? He has seen the waves before. So what happened to these particular waves? The way his mindset interpreted the waves began to make him sink. The water was not more solid or shallow. It was the same water. The waves was not heavier or softer. The same waves. But because thought limits your faith, now it's thought and influences faith and his faith was no longer after it began to sink. Your thought can limit your faith. Look at Naaman. Look at Naaman. Same thing with Naaman. The Bible says that Naaman came to um, Elisha and says, I'm leprous, recover my leprosy. Elisha said, go and take your bath in Jordan seven times. Jordan is not the cleanest of all the waters. And then Elisha said, excuse me. You know, he says, how will I do that nonsense? I thought, watch what, Eli Eli what Naaman says. He says, I thought he will come and strike. The problem wasn't the thinking. Because the problem was not the deepening the water. Was that he was expecting a miracle of the way of the miracle different from how he thought it. Let me say it again. The problem with Naaman was not that he was, he was going, refused to be dipped in Jordan. But there was a way he conceptualized the miracle. And because it didn't come that way, he couldn't receive it. His mind was blocking his miracle. So your mind, your mind, your, your thoughts can limit your faith. And let me say this this way. Your faith cannot rise above your thinking. Praise God. Your faith cannot rise above your thinking. If your thinking is a $5 kind of thinking, that's where your faith will walk in. If your thinking is like, you know, a cup of thinking, that's where your faith will walk in. If your thinking is like a massive tank of thinking, that's where your faith will walk in. Your faith will not rise above your thinking. You will not even be able to ask above your thinking. 
And the reason, I'm going to tell you the reason I'm saying this today. The reason I'm saying this is this. Have a look up here. A lot of Christians are in trouble because their mental states and what they are using their faith for is fighting against each other. Their thinking is poverty, but they are believing for prosperity. Their thinking is, I'm not good enough, but they are believing for excellence. It would never, ever work. Why? The greatest battles in your life are fought and won in your mind. Before you lose on the outside, you are going to lose on the inside. Many of you are going through challenges today. Listen to me. If you know someone that has a very tough life, the first thing you want to check is his mindset. Just listen to them talk. You will see the reason why they are stuck. You will see the reason why they have problems. The reason why is this. Once the mind has been hassled and is under attack, their life will go wrong. Their life will go wrong. Your thought will always limit your faith. So watch this now. So there are people that are praying for a job. Father, give me a job in Jesus' name. Give me a job in Jesus' name. But when they come to real life, they say, where's the job? It's, see, most of us say it's a confession. It's not just a confession. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks it. It's what is inside that your mouth is projecting. So if you want your faith to work, what is inside and what, your, what, is, inside and what is outside must begin to align. How do I mean that? You know in the Bible, the Bible calls something vain worship. What is vain worship? The Bible says that they say a lot, but their heart is far from me. So it's what is negative. The Bible calls it vain. Vain means zero. So every time you are saying something that your heart does not align, the Bible says it's zero. So you can say, eh, Psalm 91, this and this and this and this. Oh, but coronavirus, ah, we should be afraid though. Let me tell you something. What you have said is irrelevant. What your heart believes is what is relevant. That's what the Bible says. This is how it works. It, with the heart man believe it. That's where it starts from. And with the mouth, confession is made unto righteousness. You must first believe with the heart, then it will translate into a confession. Your thought limits your faith. And why are thoughts important? This is why thoughts are important. I want to show you today. And, and, and I'm just recapping. This is recapping last week now. I, I hope I'll be done with this. Can you bring the other one for me, please? right here. Just put it here. Thank you. Your thought limits your faith. Why? Thoughts produces pathway. Science call it neuro, neuro what? Neurolinguistic programming. What does that mean? Watch this now. You know, I went to a boarding school. So in my boarding school, it's really big. There's grass on the field. You know what happens? When students start walking on a certain part of the grass, after some time, it becomes a path. Yes or no? How do you become a path? Because you're walking there. Once your mind thinks a thought continuously, your heart will create it as a path. So watch this now. Once you think continuously, thoughts of scarcity, your mind will create what? A part of scarcity. Once you think continuously, thoughts of coronavirus, your mind will create what? A part of coronavirus. Once you think continuously, thoughts that my life is not okay, your mind will create a part that your life is not okay. Once you think continuously, thoughts of divorce, your mind will create a part of divorce. Listen to me. You are not just thinking you are creating a pathway in your life. You are not. Many of you think you are thinking. You are not just thinking. You are creating a pathway in your life. You need to ask yourself, what am I thinking about? I'm telling you. Because most of you are here. Your thought is extremely against your prayers. And you're wondering why your life is stuck. Listen to me. Once your thought is pulling in this way, your press is pulling this way, you become what? Stand still. Hmm. 
Thought creates a pathway. Thought creates a pathway. Watch this now. There was a woman in the Bible. The Bible says it's Herod's wife. No, Herod's brother's wife. And Herod took the woman. Do you know that? Ever look at me, please. Do you know that one time the woman's daughter danced so well in the Bible? And they asked the daughter, what do you want? The daughter wants to ask the mother. I said, what do you want up to half of my kingdom? The daughter wants to ask the woman, what should I ask for? He said, ask for Herod's head. So, sorry, so ask for John the Baptist's head. Question, is that not stupid? It's stupid because you could have asked to be the deputy president. And that will set you financially forever. Because in the first place, the reason why you marry the king is because he's rich. You could have asked for money and said to yourself. But because... John the Baptist has always attacked her and Herod for that evil that they've done. In her mind, she's always been thinking, how can I destroy John the Baptist? How can I destroy John the Baptist? As soon, see, in her mind, she's always thinking, how can I destroy John the Baptist? How can I destroy John the Baptist? Guess what? The mind created a pathway. As soon as it happened, instead of her to act for other vital things in her life, what did she act for? There are girls you will meet, what can I do for you? Say, buy me an iPhone. And you are only laughing about this reality. You wonder in everything to ask for to help your life. iPhone 10 is your problem. But the reason why is that it's not their fault. It's because the thought has been so much in their mind, they can't get away from it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There are some of you here, the thought of poverty is so much in your mind. That's why you continuously make the decision that makes you poor. I'm telling you, it's so much in your life. You, you continually make decisions that make you poor. As a matter of fact, the way it works is this. Once that thought is your mind, you recognize it on the outside. Have you noticed it? Oh, let me explain to you. You know that um, before I had a certain car, I had this Honda Accord that I thought was very scrubs in Nigeria. So before I, I, so I eventually got the car. When I got the car, I felt, wow, a lot of people have this car. You know, do, do you know why? It's not as if a lot of people have the car. Because now my mind has recognized it as my car. Anywhere I go to, I'm able to pick it up quickly. Once your mind accepts poverty as something there, you will see more poverty than opportunities. That's why on Tuesday, I'm hoping I can talk to you about that, that mind, we have to fix it. If you cannot control your thoughts, you can't control your life. And guess what? You allow your thought into your mind, your thought determines how you behave. Because the problem, this is the problem. This, you know why you're not successful here? Because your mindset said, until I go to Canada, I cannot succeed. Well, so, until I go to Canada, I cannot succeed. That's your mindset. Until I go to Canada, I cannot succeed. Until I go to Canada, I cannot. It's there in your mind. Until I go to Canada, I cannot succeed. Until I go to Canada, I cannot succeed. Until I go to Canada, I can. It's there in your mind. There, there are ladies under the sound of my voice that says, until I marry a rich man, I can't become somebody. That's why you are not somebody because you've told yourself that self-limiting lie. Some of you are here. You have a God's graces upon you in a mighty way. But you say, no, I can't be a soul leader. I, I can't do anything in church. W what am I? You've told yourself that lie. And the thing is that your thought defines how far you can go. This is your thought. The thought puts a boundary. You can go farther. It puts a boundary not just on you. It puts a boundary on your faith. It puts a boundary on your potentials. There are many ladies that say things like, they are not great guys to marry. What happens? They are creating a pathway. <laughs> and they have association of friends that believe that they are not great guys to marry. I know great guys you can marry. See, look, look at it. They are not great to create the pathway. So that pathway leads you to where? Guys that are not great. Same thing, some guys. All the girls want is your money. It leads you to a path that all the girls want is your money. The problem is, it's the thought the path is creating. Ah, glory to God. Now, let's flip to John chapter 6. And let's look at the power of mentality today. Hmm. So, how do you block your miracle? Through your thinking. How do you block your miracle? Through your thinking. 
In, in fact, can I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I just extend something? Ephesians 4.27. Let's go there quickly. Ephesians 4.27. How do you block your miracle? By your thinking. Do you remember the story we read last week where the, where the man says, even if God opened heaven, what will happen? Would bread drop down from heaven? Remember the story in 2 Kings? The Bible says, the prophet said, hey, because your mind says that it can happen. Your mind says, so your, your, your pathway says, it can happen. So it will happen, but guess what? You will not see it. Because since God will not change his mind, it will happen. But the way it will happen will be such that you will not see it. You will not eat of it. Because your mind, see, whatever your mind cannot contain, your life cannot experience. And you know, can, can I be honest with you? This is a problem with born again people. Their mind is working against you. Many people are stunned in life and stagnated and destroyed in life, not because of mind pollution, sir. Their mind has been totally polluted. And you don't need to do a lot to be poor in Nigeria. You just need to live in Nigeria. You, we breathe in poverty every day. I'm telling the truth. People go to the toilet, even in church, and stand on WC. I'm like, the, how, the, how does that mind work? You stand on the WC. Such people can't go far. The reason why is this. There's something in their mind that makes them behave that way. This is it. So, so I, say, ah, there is, I will tell, explain to you. Thoughts leads to feelings. Feelings leads to decisions. Decisions leads to behavior. Behavior leads to what? Habits. Habit does what? Determines destiny. There are some of you, every time you need something, you say, who will give me? Nobody goes for that way. That's the work of poverty thinking. What am I will give you? The wealthiest people don't think that way. They say, how can I create it? And I'm saying that the way Satan destroys people, I'm, can, can, I, can I be open today? Many of you in church, they will say, please, did they sell? He said, no, 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 no. I don't have the capacity. You are just destroying your future. Because you are saying with your mouth, you don't have the capacity. Listen to me. When they say do something, create a pathway for yourself. Do the impossible. Learn to do hard things. Learn to do difficult things. Do create a new pathway. Many of your brains don't stop. This is why people don't like mathematics. Because mathematics makes your brain sweat. But the way it works is this. If your brain sweats, it will expand. The same thing with life. When you learn to do difficult things, your capacity expands. Listen to me. Once capacity expands, it does not return back to the same size. Can I challenge you this morning? If the financial problems, if your financial goal, if one millionaire was big to you five years ago and is still big to you right now, you are becoming stagnated, sir. You should be growing. You should have bigger goals. Ephesians, let me, I, I want to read Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Let's go quickly. Ephesians 4, 27. See what, see what the Bible says. You know, I can't read everything to you, so you have to go and do Bible study for yourself. Someone says, okay, how can I fix my mind? Watch this. Let me just give you. We'll, we'll talk about that on Tuesday. So if you don't want to come on Tuesday, that's your business. You know, we'll talk about that on Tuesday. But just a simple way to fix your mind. All the thoughts that paralyze you, you come from a source. Kill the source. Whatever you feed grows. How many of you, how much time, see, many of you have Googled more about coronavirus than Psalm 91. Which one are you likely to contact? Oh, glory to God. That's a shocker, right? Many people have Googled more and read more about coronavirus than Psalm 91. Listen to me. What should you be reading? I'm not saying don't find that vital information. Sometimes the fact you need is what kills the faith you have. That when Jesus Christ sent the apostles out two by two, he said, don't talk to anybody. He said, why? They can pollute your faith. You take your phone, the account balance is 250 naira. You keep looking at it. We're looking at it, change on 5 million. When you take your phone and see 250 naira, you open your Bible. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall know why I'm putting new thoughts in my heart to create a new pathway. 
Because when you see that truth, your pathway says you're a failure. So what do you do? You have to stop. That feeding can be a blog. That feeding can be a person. That feeding can be yourself. You stop feeding it. You feed on something else. And let me tell you something. If you are in this church and you are serious about your life, you don't have up to 100 CDs. You are not serious about your spiritual life at all. All you have is Egun don't come. You know, you talk about Egun don't come. My brother, <laughs> have you noticed you, you sat during my school though? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Watch it, watch it, watch it. In the next one month, people are going to start doing more about How many of you have your first said during my masquerade? Raise up your hand. They've told you recently, I dreamt, or you dreamt about something like that. Just with me. Anybody here? In the next one month, watch it. The reason why is that the song in town is Egun masquerade. You think it's a joke, it will enter full subconsciousness. What I'm telling you, it will enter people's mind. Because as you think about it, what happens? You create a pathway. Pathway to where? Ego is chasing you. <laughs> Ephesians 4.27, let's look at it. See what the Bible says. He says, neither what? How? Verse 28. Let him that, no, let, 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 let's go to verse 26, verse 26, 26. Let's go to 26, we'll come back to it. He says, be angry and say not. Don't let the sun go down for your rod. Anger is an emotion. It's a thought pattern. It comes from the thought. He says, why? If you don't hold the anger there, what will happen? He says, you, next verse now. He says, neither give place to what? The devil. Meaning that you're not holding that thought would open up the door for Satan to come into your life. One of the things that one of my uncle told me, he told me, he said, ah, you're young, you say a church, the church is growing, just be careful. I said, why, sir? He said, there's what they call flashing star. I said, what's flashing star? People that make it on time and they crash. Let me tell you something, he had that discussion with me and that thing affected me. Uh, let me tell you something. I need something. If I stayed on that thought, I would have a pathway. What I did, I went to Proverbs 4 17. The path of the righteous is like a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter to the perfect day. Let me tell you, many of you here, you are aggressively saving so that you don't end up like your father that became poor at his old age. That's not the solution. Because that saving is necessary, but that saving is out of fear. And because it's out of fear, you will lose it. Because the Bible says, whatever is fear will eventually happen. Someone say, I have two or three boyfriends. In case someone breaks my heart, they will all break your heart. <laughs> they will all break your heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you here, somebody? Yes, Let's read. This, today, today, are you breaking free already? Yes, okay. Let's settle in. John chapter 6, verse 5. So we're talking about the power of the let's move to mentality. John 6, verse 5. Six, verse five. Yeah. Jesus Christ saw the multitude. They came. They've been with him, and I said, "Let's feed them." Watch the conversation. Verse five. The Bible says, "And Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, and said, Philip, where shall we buy bread that this may what?" Okay, let me ask that question. Who has the microphone in the choir? Anybody the microphone in the choir? Grace, stand up. Give me a microphone. Grace, where can I buy bread to feed everybody? Bonjour. Yes. Thank you. Because the question of where is what? A location question. Are you getting me? So the response of Philip should be, oh, the bakery in Bethlehem should be a location question. But when your mind has a pathway, see how Philip answered. The Bible, watch this now. And this Jesus said to prove him. Anytime God is asking you questions, be careful how you answer. Because he's not looking for an answer because he doesn't know the answer. He's because he wants to reveal your foolishness to you. The Bible says, he said this to prove it for he himself know what he would do. What did Philip say? The next verse. And Philip answered. Did he mention the area? No. He said, 200 penny water of bread is not sufficient for them that everyone may take a little. Who ask 
asked him about money the reason why is that when you have scarcity or poverty mentality once an opportunity prevents itself everything is viewed through the what through the perspective of course of what you do not have you don't view things through the perspective of opportunity and jesus saw that in philip and he was trying to help philip he said philip you have a poverty and scarcity problem He said, where? God asked you, do you like that house? You say, how can I afford it? The question I want to ask you is, did he ask you to buy the house? He said, do you like the house? Do you like the house as different than buy the house? What is wrong with your mind? Many of you need to go home and fix your mind and get your mind out of the gutter. How can you say all the great guys are married? Who said so? Because clearly you've trained yourself in a thinking that is poverty oriented, that is based on scarcity thinking. But it's time to move you to abundance thinking. Look at the next line. He said, and one of the disciples said, Andrew Simon Peter Brother said unto him, He said, There's a lot with five berry loaves and two fish. But what? What is this? Among, see, that guy's casting mentality was even better. But you'll see there. He said, someone has something, but what is this? Amongst what? So many. Because scarcity mentality devalues what you have. It tells you that another country is better than your country. It tells you that another profession is better than your profession. It tells you that another skill is better than your skill. It tells you another person's wife is better than your wife. Another person's husband is better than your husband. The other person's boyfriend is better than your boyfriend. Scarcity mentality does not value what you have. It doesn't value it. Why? Once you don't value it, you never appreciate it. Once you can't appreciate it, you can never produce it in your hands. You know the problem with most of you? You are not even appreciative of what you are. Most of you that have jobs here, you go to your job and you, you hate everything. That's why you cannot grow in it. Because when you say God promote me, you will promote you in frustration. You say I'm frustrated here. Why would He not promote you here? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's look at some. See, so, what, 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 I want to compare scarcity mentality to abundant mentality. Let me even talk a little here. Because there's so many things tied to this story. I want to ask you out of a crowd of over 5,000, probably 10,000, because there are 5,000 men, they could only find a boy that had lunch. Is that possible? Come on. There were rich people that had food in their cars. There were rich people, but all those rich people didn't have faith to surrender their food. You know why? Their trust was in what they had. I want to ask you, when Jesus multiplied the bread and there were 12 baskets left, who owned it? Who owned it? Nobody can lay ownership to it except the boy because it's the boy that gave the raw material for it to be produced. What am I saying to you? You can be rich and have scarcity mentality. That's why our politicians, they keep stealing. And, see, they steal in an insane manner. You, if they steal in a way that even Satan is surprised. They say, wow, you guys steal. Wow. Wow. The reason why is this. Although they are rich, they have scarcity mentality. And they're hoping that by stealing and keeping a lot of money, they will overcome that mentality. You don't overcome scarcity mentality by having a lot of money. You don't correct inside from outside. You fix inside and the outside will change. Glory to God. Pastor, can we take communion next, next first service? The next week? Just, you know, because some things you just need to know that you're not alone. So next week, first service, we take communion. Let me tell the other sentence now. So scarcity mentality, number one. These are scarcity mentality things. Number one, there's not enough to go around. So why, why, why didn't the rich people give their own food? Because it cannot go around. So you can be rich and not be generous and have scarcity mentality. When you say there are no good men to marry, there's not enough to go around. But God made everything abundant. Let me ask you another question. Every look up here. 
Every time Jesus Christ multiplied bread, there was always like 10 baskets full left, 12 baskets full left. I want to ask you, could he not estimate in, with his supernatural power how much each person needed to eat and how much be okay? Could he do that, yes or no? When Peter was going to fish, why was the fish more than the net? Could he not just say the amount of fish that could fill the net, why did the net begin to break? The reason why is this. Because God was trying to move our thinking to just enough to say to abundance thinking. He's trying to move. Many of you are still in just enough thinking. Let me just get a job. Let me just get this. God says, that is not what I'm saying. I want to move to abundance thinking. A place where you don't have to think about money again. Scarcity says there's not, there's not enough. What does abundance say? So, when scarcity says there's not enough, scarcity is always hoarding. Always hoarding and stealing because there's not enough. That's why they keep stealing. I want to ask you, when you don't tithe, what are you working on? Scarcity mentality. Because you feel like if this 10% goes, IAJ, Question, you've not tightened for five years now, or you've been in and out. Are you not super rich? What you believe has failed you already. Scarcity, scar that's scarcity. And those that tighten, how has the life depreciated from the one that is not tightened? Abundance says, there's a lot to go around. So, because there's a lot to go around, I can be generous. Because there's a lot to go around. The second thing is this, casting mentality. He says, what? Um, I don't have anything to achieve my dream. Abundance mentality says, I have something potentially to fulfill my dreams. Abundance always says, I never say I don't have anything. Abundance says, and watch this. Once you say you have something, you begin to look around you. That's why when the woman went to Elisha, and the woman said to Elisha, he says, you know, I, I'm poor. My kids will be taken away. Elisha asked the woman, said, excuse me, what do you have? He says, I have nothing. Elisha said, that's not the way it works. God gives seed to the sower. God always gives everybody something, no matter how irresponsible you are. Even the one that hid the one talent, God gave him one talent. Even though he knew he would hide it. He says, what do you have? The man says, okay, 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 okay. I have a pot of oil. Elisha said, you have a pot of oil and he said nothing. But when you have scarcity mentality, you don't even recognize what you have can translate to something big. Glory to God. There's a guy I met in this church. I met him outside there. I said, what do you do? He said, I'm a shopper for brands. I said, what does that mean? He said, Gucci and Manny, they buy me tickets, fly me all over the world, London, Italy, everywhere. And I go and shop what is new in design. And when I shop it, I ship it to them. And they use those designs to come up with their own concepts. I said, my God. I said, what did they find you? online they saw i like shopping and they like my style and they contacted me will you be a shopper for leader but you thought it was useless because you saw no value in it many of you can fight but antony fight and get money back your own fighting creates enemies his own fighting produces dollar because you don't value what you have some people are even ugly. It's only that nails and hand they use to advertise Rolex and it's $100,000. That finger, that hand you saw in a magazine that had a Rolex is a $100,000 deal. But scarcity makes you devalue yourself. They say, Lee, they say, say, what am I? You see, it's sell this opportunity for what I have inside me to come out. Scarcity mentality says, I can't afford it. Abundance mentality says, how can I afford it? Oh, hallelujah. Scarcity, I can't. And once you say I can't, your mind says it's true. You can't. Because whatever you believe, negative or positive, is true. Let's finish this. Someone says, how do I break negative or scarcity mentality? I'll talk a lot about on Tuesday. So if you don't come on Tuesday, I wish you all the best. But I told you one thing already. Identify what is feeding you. But I want to close today so, let, let, everyone look at me. Will they devalue Naira? Is dollar going to go up? All oh, this is happening in your mind. And let me tell you something. It's not as if it doesn't happen to me. 
because it happens to me all the time. I'm wondering this and that. So I just went and read. I want to give you maybe eight scriptures that you can use to help your mind. Eight scriptures that will help you in successful living. Maybe the first one is Job 22 verse 29. Job 22 verse 29. Why does God give us promises? God gives us promises because there are hard times ahead. So that we can hold on to his promises when there are hard times ahead. Hey, let's read this together. Want to go? When men are cast down, then you shall say, there's a lifting up, and you shall save the humble person. That's it. Should I shock you? Everybody look up to me. Harvesters, listen to me, prophetic word. Listen to me. In the Old Testament, the fathers of faith made money in recession in trouble times recession is the born against opportunity for making money we are, the money we have not seen because when they say there is recession money is not siphoned to space or mass it only moves from an existing sector to another sector so by the power of the spirit is moving from them to us it's not moving from me away how do I know that? look at Isaac it was in recession that Isaac became rich Look at Joseph. It was in recession that Joseph became rich. The reason why is that how you see in recession, walking against you, walking for you, walking against you is a pathway. <laughs> is a pathway. Is walking against me. Walking for me is a pathway. So the Bible says, when people are cast down, I will say, there's a lifting up. Okay, so then let's go. Let's go. Are you ready? Let's go. This is going to be fast. All at the media room, let's go fast. Psalm 68, verse 19. Some God's promises. Psalm 68, verse 19. See, look. Psalm 68, verse 19. Let's go. We want to be fast now at the back. We want to go. Blessed be the Lord. Who what? Either there's recession or there's no recession. He said, the Lord, he loads me with benefit. As I'm going home, benefit. As I wake up, benefit. I'm being loaded with benefit every single day. This is why my life is a beautiful life. I'm being loaded not with virus, with benefit, praise God. I'm being loaded what, with evaluation, with benefit, praise God. Are you ready, somebody? Oh, are you ready to take some more? Jeremiah 30 verse 19. Jeremiah 30 verse 19. Let's go quickly. Jeremiah 30 verse 19. Are you ready? It says, Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. I will what? I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will glorify them and they shall not be small. I will not be small. I will be multiplied greatly. That is my thinking. That, that is a thought pattern I'm creating for myself. I'm creating a thought pattern. I will not be small. Hallelujah. I will not be small. Praise God. I will be multiplied. Praise God. That's my thought pattern. I don't know what Linda Cage is saying. I don't know what Punch is saying. I don't know what economics is saying. But whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. I will multiply. Oh, glory to God. Ah. Ho, 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 ho. Will you take some more? Huh? Matthew 6, 33. Listen to me. They say when you meditate on all this news and read Corona, you will get the city and be reading it. You will read it. You will read it. In, M I in KJV, NIV, MKJV. And you will read it. Why? I'm creating what? A new pathway. See what the Bible says. Flip back to verse 32. Back, go back a little. 32. Go back a little, brother. Go back 31. I want to show you the key. key. Read now. Want to go? Hold. Why do you say hold? He said, first of all, this is the way you do. He said, take no thought. You can take a thought or you can leave a thought. That's the first thing. Because when these thoughts are going, he said, take no thought. Why? If you take the thought, you create a pathway. How do you take a thought? When you take it, you start saying it. Take no thought saying. You start what? Saying it. You say, I don't know what's happening again. No. You start saying it. What thought should you not take? What shall we eat? See, because once you are wondering, ha, ah, what shall we eat? Your thought, what, where will money come from? He said, you are creating a pathway. Uh -uh. 
He said, no, take note of what we shall eat, what we shall drink, or where we shall be clothed. Don't worry about those things. What should you do? He said, rather, he said, for your heavenly father knows all that you have need of all of these things. Verse 3, he said, rather, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. You know the thought I'm going to have? The thought of it will be added. Hallelujah. So my thought is that, praise God. As, as, as I become a solid, it's added. Praise God. As I'm fasting and praying, it's added. Hallelujah. And when it's time to sow a special seed, it's added. Praise God. I'm not thinking of subtraction. My thought is addition. Praise God. I'm not thinking of subtraction. My addition. Can I, can I give you some more? There's just three. Huh. And, and, and sometime this month, I'm going to challenge everybody because this is a tough season for our church. I'm going to challenge people to give. So I said, give? Hey, hey. They will take a give. See, it's because they are started. Because in your mind, once it leaves your hand, so let me tell you, why should you be a giver? Ever look at me. Every time you give, your image is a haver, not a taker. The image of a giver is a haver because you need to have to give. And once you have that image, you create a pathway. It's a pathway you're creating. And anything you give, you have seen the other thing. Praise God. I'm telling you. How, how do you know you have seen something you can give it away? Hmm. Hallelujah. Let me help you. I, I want to read from NIV. I want to read from NIV. NIV, right? Psalm, Psalm 37 verse 26. Psalm 37 verse 26. The next one is Psalm 3 verse 9. And the one after is Proverbs 11 24. And the one after is Proverbs 11 24 again from NLT. Yeah. So the first one, Psalm 37 verse 26. Wow, this guy. Wow. Psalm 37 verse 26. NIV. You don't have it? Should I go faster than you? Wow. Can you find it for me on the script on the Bible and give me Psalm 37 verse 26, Psalm 3 verse 9, NIV. Uh, uh, what well, this is good, but I, I want you can give me that. It says, He is ever merciful and lended, and his seed is blessed. My generation makes my children blessed. My generosity makes my children blessed. Have you found it, Pastor? Don't worry, go, go and get it, go and get it. I don't want to understand it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you. He says this, they are generous and they lend freely. Their children would be a blessing. What does my generosity do? It brings me a blessing. It makes my kids. See, let me tell you, I don't just give for myself. Even my children eat of my generosity. Many of you are eating of your parents' generosity. The Message Bible, Psalm, um, the Message Bible, Proverbs 11, 24, the Message Bible. Do you have that one? See what the Bible says. Why is it good to be generous? See what the Bible says. Let's want to go. The world of the generous gets larger and larger, and the world of the sin gets smaller and smaller. What does that mean? My giving increases my influence. My giving expands my capacity. I say, once you give something, you conquer it. Watch the people they think in a small way. I know. See, see they think in a very small way, very small way. Even when you watch unbelievers that are, are, are generous, they, they have so much influence. He said, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy. So, so I'm saying, do you know why I'm saying this? Because we're going to break the power of scarcity by giving. And when you give, what will happen? Your world, your influence will get bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, I, I told myself, you know, I'm going to give a testimony. On the island church, we just bought the island church property. Praise the Lord. That's a good time to clap. And, and we paid the first 25%. And I was telling the church, I said, hey, we need about 800 million more. Mainland is doing huge things with them. So I was just talking with the island church. And we're having a talk show. There was, we're just sharing about something. After the service, one guy sent me a text. I said, Pastor Bolaji, let the whole church raise. And I told them, I said, this money we want to raise for the island church. We don't want to take a debt um, loan for it. We want to pay cash. That's what I'm believing God for. And it's huge because it's, everyone, it's way more than an annual budget. We're still believing to finish up Antonia and move there. And this is a huge project all by the side. 
But my, see, it's not me that pays for it. It's God. What is wrong? Can't I just believe for God to do what only God can do? If you want to believe for tiny things, as if your God is Ogwan and Shongo, that's your problem. I want to believe things that the Almighty can do. And I finished, when I finished teaching, I came down the stairs and someone said the message. He said, Pastor, you choose any Sunday of your choice. Ask the whole church to give. Whatever they give, I'll match it. Let me tell you something. Some, until you act in faith, some things don't come out. I called the brother. I said, hope you know that they can give me Sunday 200 million. He said, that the Lord can do it. He said, whatever they give, they'll match it. Let me tell you, say, let me, church, we're on a new tangent. You, you, you need to be blind not to know that things are moving. All your friends, you will tell them, my friend, I come back to church, things are moving now. Because some of you, the first time in your life, you give your first 10 million. The first time, your first 100 million. And the, the reason why you can give is because you have. Last scripture, New Living Translation. That same Proverbs 11, 24. It's time to close. You don't have it? Grieve freely and become wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. Thus hear the Lord. Let me tell you why. See, see, see. It's not, and when you say give, it's not about the money. It's the fact that God wants you to create pathways. That's what he says. He says, have the pathway of a giver. Because for you to give, you must be what? A haver. I want to ask you, guys that give girls, that give other girls as girlfriends to other people, they never lack now. Ah, why? For the pipe to produce water, the pipe was wet. We need to break this scarcity thing. Some of you, let me tell you something. And this is not about church. You will go to your family, pick up somebody that's how pay for your school fees. Because you just want to change your orientation. Because every time it's about you, it's because it's not enough. Every time you think about others, it's because it's enough. I'm believing that this coronavirus, as we watch it, if we have to be sending sanitizer, we will send to state in Nigeria, schools, we will not even say, should we be sent to the U.S. to help them? So Nigerian church is helping you. America. That's how we should be thinking. They, are, they in, are they superior to us? Must, must they always be helping? When are we going to? They need our help now. One, 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 one church was planting, one very influential church was planting a church in Australia. We sent a seed. He said, this is the first African ministry that is sending a seed to us in Sydney. That is part way, it's part way, it's part way. Being black is not a problem, sir. Is the mind that is lacking that is a problem? Stand, let us pray. Musicians, wake up. Wake up. I need to see you in Grammys. And so I need to see you. Yesterday, by the grace of God, I was in ABMC Award. I was there. No, no, don't say here because you know why I went there. I was there because I said, let's see how they behave. So I want to come and collect our award. We can collect it shine. Not anything. We must produce movies that supplant whatever they're doing in Hollywood. We must produce it. Hallelujah. Please, get this message. Go back on, come back on Tuesday. Father, I pray that today, help them make a decision to stop feeding what grows their fear and scarcity mentality. And make a decision to feed what grows their burner thinking. In Jesus' name.